everybody, this is Catherine St. Clair at Physic in Action. Uh, if you want to get started well, you should have measurements so that you can base your progress on an initial uh, situation, initial numbers. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take, I'm going to show you how to take your measurements on yourself because taking them on somebody is something, taking them on yourself is a challenge. Um, what this is going to help you do is it's going to be able to, to see where you're at right now and you'll be able to measure uh, whenever you want to do it, if it's one month, two months, three months, um, that will be up to you. But it'll be able to guide you through what you need as a goal or if you have to adjust a goal. So we're going to take mine. I've already taken mine last week because I'm on a detox, so you'll be, I'll compare just so that you know how much, how it's going and how I have to adjust. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to use the scale. The scale that I have is a, a scale that actually gives you body weight and, and mass and whatnot. There's a lot of other issues that's going to give you. Not all scales are like that, but many are nowadays. So first we're going to enter our weight. You need to take as minimal clothes possible. So if it's time to take it off, take it off. If you can take your measurements early in the morning before you've had anything to eat in fasting zone, you're gonna have more accurate results because during the day, your weight may fluctuate by what you've eaten um, and what you've done during the day. So right now, um, you're trying to go fasting, no clothing, so I'm gonna take off my t-shirt and I'm gonna have my sports bra on, so don't freak out. Okay, so we have our scale. Mine's already set up for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click it in it's going to ask you for your height, your uh, um, age, and your sex. Hop on here. And as soon as it clicks, these scales will usually give you a body fat count, which will depend on your hydration. If you want to zoom in, I'll show you what it looks like. I'll flip her over. Okay, so right here is my weight, 146.4. It's giving me a 15.6 fat. This will differ depending on your hydration. This gives you hydration. I'm at 58.2%. Um, this should be near the 60%. If it's lower than that, you need to be drinking more water. It gives you bone mass, which is at 6.2 pounds right now. This is not super accurate, but it gives you a good idea. It also tells you how many calories you could be eating a day to keep the same body weight. And it also gives you your age. So <laughs> this machine, I'm 12 years old, and I'm allowed to eat 2,951 calories a day to keep my current size. So I'm going to write these down. One, three, six, uh, you want to just keep these in mind because it'll be easier for you to know what to do later on. Now, I'm going to shut this puppy off. I'm going to put it underneath. We have a hand scale. Um, it's not a scale per se. It's a, it's a caliper. Okay. So what it does, it gives you body fat. Um, it's quite accurate. What it does technically is you put your hands on these little tabs and it will go through your body and it will send a, 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 a signal and it will tell you, give or take, how much you have fat in your body. Mine as well is, is already set up, okay? So I'm just gonna take it for my sake. If you don't have one of these, it's not a big deal. You can come see me and I'll do it for you. So it's all set up. You wanna make sure that your height is right. You wanna make sure that your weight is right. You wanna make sure the age, and if you're an athlete or not, it makes a big difference. So I'm gonna just put start. What you're gonna do is gonna have your thumbs up. Just a nice hold, firm hold. You don't have to be uh, pushing it. You don't have to be struggling on it. And this machine gives you a body fat, which mine is 18 at the moment, okay? And it also gives you your BMI, and your BMI is your body mass index. Now this BMI, which is 21.6, gives you an idea of what ratio you should be in. It used to be that you needed to be between 22 and 26 to be in a good range. Anything above 26 means you you got to start being careful with the eating and the exercising. And if you were under 22, it used to mean that you were a little underweight. 
However, they've changed the scales around. Now it's 18 to 26. They made it so people don't stick on the higher part and say, yay, I'm at 20, I'm close. So they brought it down so that people say, ooh, okay, 18 to 26 is a big range, okay? So that we're using this. Now, for measurements, you're gonna need a saw tape measure, okay? Usually uh, you can find these in any uh, sewing shop. This one's a beach body, so if you order beach body, it often comes with it. We're gonna start measurements, and um, I need you to be a little bit relaxed, not flexing, not holding in and stuff, because you wanna have true results, okay? So we're gonna start with the chest, because it's the easier one to start with. Now with the chest, you're gonna be just wrapping it around, okay? And you're gonna bring it up to where, excuse the language, the nipples are, girls and boys, okay? With women, you want to make darn sure that um, you're wearing a bra because your measurements be, might be falsified. Now you're going to take where it arrives and just look at the number, okay? And you're going to inscribe it. Darn! Obviously, you got to lose in the right places. Um, and then we're going to take the waist. Now, when you take the waist measurement, you got to be careful. Um, a lot of people, your waist goes from here to here, right? Now, if you want a proper measurement, what you're going to do is you're going to take two fingers under the ribs. Okay, it's just above the belly button. In most cases, mine just happens to be higher than normal, I guess. And you're going to take it, and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're... Okay, make sure you're not sickening in, okay? We're at 28. Now, for women, we're going to be taking it on the hips. For men, we're going to be taking the shoulders, okay? Um, Hips for men, well, it's not very useful, and shoulders for women, it's not as useful, unless you want to do bodybuilding and need to know how much to grow in your, in your uh, shoulder area, okay? So I'm gonna start with the hips. You're gonna take the biggest part, okay, which is the uh, greater trochanter, tro which is a hard word to say in English for me. Uh, the quatre quatre is the French word. Um, basically, it's your hip bone. You wanna make sure, I'm not talking about this hip bone, okay, which is actually pelvic bone. Not that one, this one. So what, this is the measurement that we're going to take. Okay, you take it at the widest part. Make sure you're standing straight. And then you're going to take your measurement. Okay, don't suck it in because it will show differently. And obviously if you have better results later, you won't be able to tell. So 39, you write that down. Now we're going to take the shoulders. It's a little bit more complicated. Make sure you get the right side of the tape or else you're gonna have some strange numbers. You're just gonna wrap around, okay? And men, I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath because actually your shoulders, when you take a deep breath, shrink, okay? So you're gonna take a deep breath and then you're just gonna release. And as you release, you're gonna have a true result, okay? That's 42 and a half. Most men are gonna be a little bit higher, hopefully. If not, we can work on that. Okay, now we're going to go to the thighs. Now you've got to make sure that you're measuring both of them. If you're not measuring both sides, you might have an imbalance that we could be working. Um, maybe it's something you're doing. It could be an old injury. Um, don't make too much of a big deal about it if you're not injured at the moment. However, if you're training for competition, uh, being on stage bodybuilding, fitness or, or whatnot, you may want that to level out a little. So we're gonna to try to do this. By measuring, you'll know. Now, conventional measurements are usually taken half thigh, okay? The only problem with that is that you probably will be bigger some results, and if you end up taking it in a different spot the next time, you won't have an accurate result. So what I do is I take the biggest part of the thigh, and from there, I mean, it's always gonna be the biggest part of the thigh, so I can't go, I can't have a mistake that's that great. So I'm at 23 on the right one. And I'm gonna do the left. Now make sure as well that you're not flexing or that you gotta, you gotta stay relaxed. If you're flexing, you'll end up having a falsified uh, measurement. So the fattest part, see in my case, I do have one leg that's a little bit longer than the other and it shows here I have 22 and a half versus the 23. It's not because I work out one side more than the other because of having the one leg longer, it's always supporting the weight more often on one side. So one muscle is working more endurance and one's usually more stagnant, okay? 
We're going to write that down. Now, calf measurements. When you take a calf, people have different calves. I have a sporty calf, which end up being much lower. Runners' calves have that. If you have bikers, they'll have usually, and I'm just generalizing here, they'll have a higher calf, or ladies that wear high heels a lot will have a higher calf. Okay, so take it in the high, in the widest part of your calf. And mark those notes down. Same thing on the other side. Make sure you're not flexing. You may flex to find your spot, but make sure you're not flexing while you're doing that measurement. Okay. Now, for the biceps, here it gets a little tricky. Um, it's a tuck and roll type of thing. So you're supposed to have it with your hand out extended. If somebody were to measure, you would be measuring in the biggest part of your arm when it's out with the hand uh, palms up. Okay? But to do that yourself is a little complicated. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to roll her up. Okay? So we're going to do do and put it on the inch side so we can see. And then you're just going to take the top and you're just going to roll it until you hit the top point and you see it's holding on its own and then you can tell the measurement okay this will be more accurate than anything else we're going to take the forearm play on the one side because once your your dominant side has to be measured it's a little bit more complicated what happens for the forearm you're gonna forearm i'm speaking like a frenchman <clears throat> and I am French, so I can say that. <laughs> Here you're going to have a big muscle. Usually when you flex, it comes out. Men, you'll really see it. Women, we see it a little bit less, unless you're really working hard at it. But you're going to have the same, you're going to use the same method. You're going to go where it's highest, and you're going to wrap it around until it's at the high point, and just let it rest, and you'll have an accurate measurement right there. Okay? And see, it stays. I'm going to do the other side, a little bit complicated. And again, like I said before, both sides, because you will notice that there may be a difference between the two. And you want to be able to adjust if there's any possible way you can adjust your exercises to make it happen so that they're more level. See, in my case, the right arm is almost half an inch bigger. And it's not because I use it more, because in training I actually use the left one more, even if I'm right-handed. Um, but most cases, your um, the, the arm that you don't use is going to be bigger, and I'll explain why. If you're going to do, let's say, your groceries, um, you're going to take off and you're going to go buy four or five bags of groceries. You're going to come out evenly, two, three on each side, whichever. You're going to walk up to your car. Okay. When you're going to open your car door, there's one of two things you're going to do. You're either going to put the bags down and open the door, or you're going to transfer everything in the other hand because maybe there's snow or maybe it's rains and then there's a puddle there and you don't want to put them down, and you're going to open the car door. All the weight is being held by your non-dominant arm, and the dominant arm is the one that you're going to be using for more tactical things, okay, more coordination, more agility. So this is a reason why this arm tends to be a little bit bigger, the non-dominant, okay? I took it. Now we're going to take the forearm again on the top and over and just verify that. That's good. So this is pretty much what you have for measurements. Now your measurements, like I said before, will help you track your progress. Um, in our one week uh, detox, exactly one week, I took my measurements on Monday, I've lost one inch in the chest, I've lost one inch in the waist, half an inch in the hips, quarter of an inch in each thigh, which I knew because that's my last place to go. The um, calves stay pretty much level, the arms stay level because I'm not particularly training them right now, I'm just getting back, doing a detox, you don't want to be pushing too much hard weights. I, pr I prefer the work on the cardio, but as we go uh, for the next couple of weeks, then I'll be introducing uh, much harder workouts. So stay tuned, and I hope this helps you out, and I'll try to get a sheet up for you so that you can actually um, write down what you need. Thank you for listening. Till next time.